Hello everyone, Blind Metal Gamer and Servant of Cats 2022 here, and it's now time for another episode of Bake hey. and More Fun. And today our guest is former Iced Earth vocalist and current Seventh Servant vocalist John Greenley. John, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Nice to be with you. All right. Megan, I'll let you take the first question today. Okay, hang on one second. Let me pull it up. Okay. Um, what is your favorite holiday and why? My favorite holiday? That's a good one. Um, Fourth of July. I love fireworks. Yeah. That's my Mine favorite. Is Christmas. Well, yeah. when we yeah. do Christmas on New Year's Day. There you go. On New yeah, Year's my, Day. Yeah, my favorite yours, is also Christmas. Yep. All right. All right, next question is, you were in Ice Earth on the Night of the Storm Rider album, and you left after recording that album. What was your favorite songs off of that particular album to record? And when you left, did you still continue your career in music, or did you venture into other things? My favorite songs were Traveling Stygian and Desert Rain. Cool. And when I left Ice Earth, I went into business for myself, and I didn't play music for a long time. Oh, wow. Cool. I raised right. my dad. Cool. All right, Megan, next question. Okay, is there any band or artist you would never play with? Um, well, that's a hard one. <laughs> oh, well, I can't really think of one, honestly. Well, that's good. All right. Um, now that you have Seventh Servant and the Tree of Life is released and doing well, when you do open up for Striper in June, or yeah, when you do open up for Striper in June, have yeah. you considered with your band possibly covering any of your favorite Ice Earth songs from not only the Night of the Storm Rider album, but the lighter albums as well, if you have any favorites off the lighter material. Um, I don't know about that. I'll probably do the Tree of Life only. Um, but if I was going to do some covers, I'd probably do Traveling Stygian. Uh, when the Night Falls was another one of my favorites. And Iced Earth is one of my favorite mm -hmm. songs. All right, Megan. From the Next first question. album. I really like the first album. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, that's it's real good. That's the reason I joined the band is because the first album was so good. Yeah. You yep. had been telling us a story, but you, you told us a story of your granddaughter the other day before yeah. um, this thing kept messing up. Were you, um, can you tell it to us again? Oh, yeah, that she wanted, uh, what she wanted for her birthday was a Barbie house. Yeah. Or uh, those uh, sour balls. Yeah. Like, if yeah. you can't afford to buy me a Barbie house, and you can buy me them little sour balls. I really like those. And I said, sour ball candies? <laughs> she goes, yeah. So it's either a house or a bag of candies. And she said, yeah, either one. Hey. So hey. Ginger, Ginger and I found her the Barbie house. Mm -hmm. So now I need to get her the Barbie RV so she can go on vacation. I don't know what that <laughs> means, but... That'd be cool. Hey. Oh, yeah. All right. So um, <laughs> now with the current situation, you know, with Ice Earth being on hiatus, when and if they do come back, would you be um, open to working with John again, doing lead vocals, if he was to ask you to do so on the next Ice Earth record? Um, yeah, I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say no. It would just depend on what the material was, you know. Um, uh, you know, I'm trying to follow the Lord now, so. Yeah. And so right, is he. Right, right. So is he. He's been saved, too, you know, and baptized and everything, so. Cool. I would say in future material may be different than the older material. So. Yeah. Hey, I'd be open. That. Yep. I would be open, you know. I mean, I, I, would, I was wanting him to play rhythm guitar. On my album, but he just was too busy. Right, right. He's got a lot going on, and I understand that. 
Oh yeah, who wouldn't want John Schaefer to play guitar on their oh, album? Oh, oh, I know, I know, <laughs> it would be awesome. All yes, right, Megan. Awesome. Next question. Uh, you could ask another question. I got to think of one. All right. Yeah. Um, all you, right. You let's took say... your question. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I had one, and I don't know if I do. So you can. All right. Um, all right. For the next Seventh Servant album, um, are you gonna? continue your con concept off of the tree of life or are you going to venture into new conceptual material and what uh, inspired you to become a born again Christian? Well, um, I've really always been a born again Christian. I've not always been the best Christian, but mm -hmm. um, I walked away from music after I surfed and I was kind of disheartened for a while. Mm -hmm. And the Lord put a song in my head that played over and over in my head, the Revelation song. Right. So I got some buddies together, and I decided to go ahead and do the Revelation, cool. which led into the Tree of Life and into the Book of Revelation. Cool. And, yeah, yeah. the next record is going to be the continuation of the Book of Revelation. Oh, cool. I, I did up to the third chapter on this album, mm -hmm. and it's a word-for-word word rendition of the book from the first word to the last word in the third chapter so mm -hmm. i hey, am um, gonna do, i'll do that again yeah I'll, oh, i'm cool. gonna go with chapter four and mm -hmm. uh travel on from chapter four until we'll see we'll see how it goes probably get cool. two or three albums out of that book before yeah, i'm finished you know someone that we both know they would love that yes um Caitlin. yep yep servant of cats mm -hmm. worker yeah, who, <laughs> as you know, the other day, Tim insulted herself, and you had to respond. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? I don't know what she said. She, she just wasn't very nice about, to her, about herself, was she, Tim? <laughs> Not really. Um, all right, Megan, you get the next question. Okay. Um, what is one thing you would tell somebody that is kind of hard on themselves, like how they look or... Like how they are themselves, how they, how see they themselves. harm themselves, how they see themselves. Oh yeah, you mean how would I build somebody, build somebody, somebody up that feels bad about themselves? Yeah. So you're saying you got to mm -hmm. just tell them that they are they were built and made in the image of God. Yep. Mm. And when you think about that really hard, and you realize that you're yeah. created in His image in some way. Mm -hmm. And you really appreciate yourself a lot more. Yeah. yeah and you take care, better care of yourself. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Tim, not Tim. Caitlin is very much a um, Christian and says that to me all the time. And then I'm going to start telling that to her, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All it's right. the truth, too, like, isn't it? Where you are going to build myself? I realize really that we're me. made made in his image to, to mm -hmm. act and be like him. And, it really oh, yeah. changes the outlook on life. Exactly. Oh, yeah. You okay. realize that you're, you're worth something and that you're valuable. And that's oh, yeah. The real we, all have work. we all have some we, work. We have crappy-ass bodies, some of us, man. Yeah. It's really, hard, really, hard to, really hard to live in the body that we're given sometimes. Oh, but yeah. You realize, you realize that, that that sometimes can be a plus in your, in your favor. Mm -hmm. and that, Oh, yeah. You, you can reach people that you couldn't normally reach because of it. Yeah. Right. So okay. that, that's that's really kind of the truth of it. All right. Some people get lucky and uh, they get good hair, and some people are unlucky and have no hair. Yeah. But then right. you got to look like, at the bright side. You don't have to like, spend a lot of money on shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> I know, right? You can spend yeah. hours playing with your hair. You're getting it caught and stuff. And, <laughs> you know? I remember okay. when I had short hair, Tim, you know, and I remember how easy it was. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it is for you, too. Boom, bang, boom, you're done, you <laughs> <Yep>. know? <laughs> Go get you a little haircut, and uh, everything's good. Exactly. And okay. you see this, you see this, what I got here, right? Oh, it looks <laughs> good. Everybody like, oh. Your hair looks so good. Yeah, well, you don't know what you got to go through to have hair like this. It's mm -hmm. just it's it's unbelievable, you know? Not only that, but people call you names and say yeah. things behind your back. And, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's okay, though. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm um, glad I still have my hair. Yeah. Right. Okay. 
So on the next record, you're going to continue the book of Revelation. You did a song with Tim Ripper Owens called Jezebel on the Tree of Life. Will there be more guest vocalists on the second record? Or are you going to stick to doing lead vocals yourself? How are you going to plan that out? Oh, I think uh, I think Ginger's going to sing more on this next album. And she's actually joined me in singing harmonies and backgrounds and backups on this album. Oh, cool. Like when we play live, she's actually going to sing. She has a really good voice and she plays bass really good and she's going to utilize her voice more. So mm. you may look for her voice to be on the album, maybe in some lead songs and maybe, you know, some strong background. But I'm always open to Tim too. If he wants to come and sing a couple more songs, I'm not going to say no. You know, the guy's a fantastic vocalist. You know, oh, yeah, also, he is. if Gene wants to sing, he could sing. If uh, Matt wants to come on and sing, I'd be happy to have him too. Either one, you know, I'm, cool. I'm yeah. pretty open, I'm open to anything like that. Cool. Um, anything that makes it better, right? Exactly. Yep. Oh, yeah, it reaches more people. Exactly. And we know that they all have good, they all have good fan bases, and there's oh, lots yes. of good fans. I played with Brent Smedley mm-hmm. quite a bit. And he's come nice. and play shows with me. Oh, he's a wonderful cool. drummer, man. Mm-hmm. And a wonderful person. And he's got a really nice band out, out of the Darkness fan. Or oh, out of the out of Darkness is awesome. They're it good. is. And they're making another record right now. Nice. He, yeah, he told me he's been working really hard in the studio. They're probably they're probably winded up around the end of January. Yeah. So I look for another another record coming from them guys. Oh, I'll definitely be on the lookout for that. All right, yeah, Megan. His, his guitar player is really good. Too. The whole band okay. is a bunch of nice guys. Yeah. Um, I had actually had people ask me how I know God is real. And I've told them the story of my life. Right. Because I wasn't supposed to walk. wasn't supposed to talk. I was supposed to have heart surgery right. by the age of seven. And then I almost died in 2014. Right. So I'm like, my life is proof that God is real. Yeah, like all these things have happened to me. You don't have any doubt. Real, that's why I know God is real. Right. Um, how would you put it to someone? How like your experience with knowing God? Oh, there's so many experiences with knowing God. Mm-hmm. Um, just really how you feel in your heart. Yeah. You know what I mean? And how He changes you, and how He helps you walk away from some really bad things. He's helped oh, yeah. me walk away. He's healed my body. He's done all mm. kinds of stuff for me. He's yeah. kept me alive. He's kept me yeah. alive all this time. It's like yeah. a miracle. And it's mm. a miracle that I still have music. And it's a miracle every grandchild that I have. And then every child I had watching mm. one of my children be born. It's yeah, super proof of that, you know? Oh, well, yeah. For me. It's just um, nothing like that. How about you? Yeah. All right. For me, um, I would say the vision I've been blessed with, I um, mean, you know, being born at 26 weeks, um, they didn't know if I was going to make it through the first night or not. And here I am now doing yep. what I do, you know, for work and doing this stuff and doing uh, my game streaming at night, you know, doing my job. Yep. And, and you, you have know. a girlfriend. You yep. got a life going on. You're always oh, yeah. busy. Oh, yeah. You're always upbeat. Yep. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know? And you could be One, down and saying and feeling sorry for yourself the whole time. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, but you're, not. Whole... You're, you're really full of life, man. It's amazing, honestly. And this is yep. why I'm doing the video and doing the interview with you is because you amaze yeah. me. So, and you've amazed me over the years just watching you and watch you interact with people. So, That's I'm cool. happy to do this interview with you. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I mean, we're, cool. We're happy to have you on. Yep. Very much so. All right. So, um, have you ever considered um, doing any like live video game streaming on your YouTube channel, or is that something you've not dabbled into or had any desire to dabble into? Um, I'm really not a gamer. Um, I used to play in the arcades when I was kids when the first games came out. Like uh, I forget even the names of them, but I had I had a game room for a while, even and I had pinball machines. Oh, and I had yeah. a Terminator oh. 2, and I had, uh, what is it called? The first first game was Asteroids. Yeah, Asteroids, Space Invaders, yeah, Joust. Space Invaders, and Galaga. 
Oh those yes, are my, those are my games that I stood in front of for years, and even Ms. Pac Man and Ms. Pac Man Junior. Did you know that they uh, are re-releasing those as one up arcade machines now? Oh yeah, I believe it. I yeah. believe oh, it. Oh yeah, they're releasing all that. And all of them, all my kids machines. are into that. And my wife Ginger, she's a gamer. She loves games, and her kids love games. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. see, when when I I walked away from that, I went into the guitar realm and just spent all my time playing mm-hmm. a guitar in my bedroom for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. And I really devoted myself to that, where a lot of my friends were gaming. I worked on music constantly. I was in some sweaty garage with a drummer somewhere, working mm-hmm. out the beats and playing crazy songs. And that's that's where I really spent my time. I didn't really have time to play games per se, you know. So later on, yeah. you know, people really got into that more. And I still just stayed with the music thing, learned about yeah. studios and learned about equipment, learned about recording, and, and spent uh, a lot of time oh, in the yeah. studio. And that's really what took all my time up. So I didn't really have time to be a gamer per se. Um, you know, my first so question was, was, "Oh God, was you?" Like oh. The PS2, the PS3, the PS4, all that stuff that was all bought for my kids. And oh, I've got kids. a PS5. I've got a PS5. You're all the yeah. way up to the top now. Oh yeah, I mean the four. My, yeah, oh yeah, my four was. Uh, starting to act funky and it was time to upgrade and i heard there was a lot of good accessibility features on the ps5 so i upgraded oh yeah you know i'm doing and I, that mm. and we used our ps3 for you know a dvd player too you know we go oh. red, red box oh, yeah. movies and watch them on our ps3 all the time and then oh, that yeah. would make, make little steven mad because we were taking his game machine so we had oh, to get him a man. PS4, and then we just used the PS3 to watch video games, and he had his PS4. So um, he go he went to college before I had a chance to buy the PS5. But <laughs> he's gone into these other games like uh, Destiny. And, yeah, and, uh, these other really crazy games that are interactive online that take a really oh, high yeah. powered computers to play. Oh, and man, I'm my game right now is uh Tekken and then um Mortal Kombat 11. I'm gonna be watching the game awards. I don't know, <laughs> jo- you uh, if either of you all are gonna watch, but I'm gonna be watching the game awards Thursday night. To see okay. what uh, Nether Realm reveals and what um, Tekken Eight's going to have coming and right. all that. So, you love that stuff. You you can't wait for the next upload or whatever. Oh so, yeah, my, my 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 stepson Steven, like I said, he's really into Destiny. He's like one of the top ten players in the world. Oh and wow! And they they actually sent him a jacket. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, he's really into it, man. And, he, we've kind of lost him to it. It's hard to even get in, t- in touch with him. He stays up all hours of the night playing. And, you know, it's this team game, too. They have oh, people yeah. from all over the world playing. So I, I'm really not in that world at all. I, I like, yeah. have to bang on his door and say, hey, come out, come out, you know. I'll leave you alone. <laughs> I'm up till 5 in the morning. <laughs> so that's what games are to me. It's a distraction uh, from my stepson. Oh man, but he God. really loves it, and he's a good kid, and he's gone. He's, he's in his third year of college, so cool, cool. cool. All right, I Megan, think my cousin, I think my cousin Trey is too. What are you doing, Swimmy? Move, please. What's funny is I told him you got to get a job. You got to get a job. So then he gets yeah. a job, and he works in a grocery store, and his oh. boss plays the same game he does. <laughs> and all the employees play the same game he does. So he really liked his job. He went right oh, up yeah. the ladder because, yeah, he was beating them all at night in the game. So they were all asking him for hacks. And <laughs> he got another raise and another raise. Oh, boy. So, yeah, gaming is in my yeah, life. I'm just not part of it, you know. Swami. Fine, screw you. <laughs> the cat's trying to get in on the interview. Mm, yep. He's like, he went all over, he was in my lap, and then he got off my lap, and he went here, over to the right of me, and then he went over to the left of me, then he went behind me, and onto the window. Yep. He wants some uh, attention. Uh, all right, yep. Megan. So, yeah, we're, we're going to play for uh, Striper. We're mm-hmm. going to play the Whiskey mm-hmm. Go-Go. Nice. With Striper and uh, Shroud and Fear Not. They're all nice. fans from Locks Records. 
I signed to nice. Rocks Records out of California. Congratulations. And, uh, they're, they're the ones that made the record and helped me do it. They helped me a lot. And they're still helping me a lot. They're the ones that helped me set the shows up. Cool. And also, Sunday night, this coming Sunday night, we're going to be playing at the Brickyard in All Knoxville. Right. I got a full cool. band. It's freaking almost an orchestra, six piece band. Nice. I have, uh, two guitar players behind me, a bass player, a keyboard player, and a drummer. Nice. So we got the full band. And we're playing with a band called Existing in Exile. So, nice. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. I in Nashville. Uh -huh. Tim knows, oh, I have a friend that lives in Nashville, and Tim knows all about her. Yeah. yeah. There's some things she said. Nashville's uh, about an hour or two away. We're going to Knoxville. Yeah. And Knoxville has a really good metal scene. They probably yeah. got the best metal scene in Tennessee. Yeah. And then the next closest thing would be uh, Asheville. That's where yeah. I went and seen the Cavalera Brothers. Mm. Nice. Man, were they good. That's the best concert I've seen in a long time. All right. Yeah. They All just right. found it out, man. All right, Megan, next question. Um, Have you ever had any uh, more interaction than this with people with disabilities before? And <laughs> what was um, it like? Yeah, yeah I, was, I was telling you, I, I want to interact with some deaf people. And I was... Yeah. Uh, I was actually learning how to do some sign language a little bit. I know and, very uh, little. Yeah, the very Lord little. told me that uh, he's going to have me interacting with some deaf people. So I probably will be still continue to learn some sign language. And uh, that, that that's the truth of it. And, and not only that, but, you know, when I was younger, I worked in a lot of rest homes with people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was around it quite a bit. Yeah, but in my, um, in my everyday life, um, I don't see too many people where I live out here in the mountains with disabilities, other than you know, some of them are retarded, but they're you know, yeah. they're not really retarded, they're just stupid, right? It's med med mentally <laughs> di intellectual disability, yeah, Thank yeah, you. they beat themselves up, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. intellectual disability. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of drugs and drunks and weird stuff yeah. that goes on out here in the woods. And mm -hmm. It's uh, happening everywhere in America, sad to say. That a lot oh, of people yeah. are on, are on meth, methamphetamine and uh, yeah. on these pills. And All so that stuff. That's and, what I'm know, talking about. They they take their perfectly good life and make themselves and, disabled, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, it's really sad. It's really sadder than people that have disabilities that, that really struggle to have a good life, you know? Mm -hmm. so it's I really know a girl who um, I went to a day program with her name was I can't say her name the, the thing but one girl would always pick on her other staff would hear that girl pick on her and then when the one would go yo stop it leave me alone right. they would yell at her but not yell at the girl who was picking on her and that's one of the Jeez. reasons why I quit going there because I got so sick of it like yeah, yeah. Other girl. it's terrible and man. I actually went off on her one time and um one step in, I was like, you're pissed. I'm like, yes, I'm pissed. I'm sick of you and Jerry being the only ones that get after this girl and not yelling at the girl who ends up going off because she's being picked on. Right. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So my next I question. Can tell you, I can tell you a crazy story about uh, <laughs> a handicapped person that I knew. Okay. Okay. When I, when I was working in the rest home, I was working in Boston in a rest home. I worked mm -hmm. for the guy that owned several rest homes. So mm -hmm. I had an apartment in the top of the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would just work me in different positions. Like if the janitor didn't come in, I was a janitor. If the cook mm -hmm. didn't come in, I was the cook. If the nurse's aide didn't come in, I was a nurse's aide. Right. So mm -hmm. they had a guy that came in the midnight shift. His name was Bob. Mm -hmm. And he was really quiet. And... Mm -hmm. uh, he, was, he had some disabilities, you know, but he liked to listen. He had a headphone and an AM radio, and he'd listen to Boston Red Sox baseball constantly, you know. Yeah. So they had a they had a cook that lived there. He lived in the room next to me, and there was another guy, another nurse that lived in the other room. There was three of us that lived in the top of the building. Mm -hmm. Well, 
every night I'd come in and relieve Bob and I'd say, Bob, how's it going? Who's winning the game? And, you know, he would open up to me. He would talk to me because mm. I was nice to him, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And then the other guy would come in and call him names and say terrible things to him and, and just berate him. Right. Oh, wow. And, and this went on for years, man. Him and the, uh, the cook and the other guy that lived mm -hmm. upstairs. Right. They picked on Bob every night, man. Mm -hmm. and, and then when I quit the job, I said, Bob, good luck, man. I wouldn't blame you if you quit this job. And he said, no, I love my job. I just don't like some of the people here. I said, oh, and I don't blame you, you know, but I have yeah. to go. I got to go work at another place. And he mm -hmm. said, well, I'll miss you. And I said, well, I'll miss you too, Bob, you know. Yeah. So uh, about a year later, I call my boss, who's still my friend that owned the place. And I said, so how's everything going? And he says, oh, so it's going good. I said, how about Bob? Is Bob still there working for you? This is what Bob did. Bob went upstairs on his third shift and he cut the cook's head off with a butcher knife. Oh, no. And he went oh. into the other room where the other nurse was passed out drunk and cut his head off with a book. Oh, wow. So wow. neither one of them saw that coming. <laughs> yeah. That's mm. a true story, that's, that's, too. That's, 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 if you pick on somebody too much, it's going to... Right. Yep, that's it's what I'm saying. You. You, just, you just never know. And he knew when they would get drunk and pass out, they both would get really hammered every night. Mm -hmm. Every night they would just come in sloppy drunk and Bob was a security guy. He watched them come in. He'd have to sign them in, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. he kind of watched the door and make sure the people didn't leave the house at night. Some, some of the people were on medication and they'd do some crazy stuff. But mm -hmm. as long as Bob was sitting there, nobody went out, you know? And this is in downtown Boston in a rich area called Brookline. Oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, Bob was, uh, he watched the people at night. That was his job. He was the midnight guy. So yeah. when both of these guys came in one night, they probably said some rotten stuff to him and walked up and went and got in their bed, all drunk and passed out. So yeah, and everybody paid. has a breaking point. Lord knows I've reached yep. a lot. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty badly. But not like so when my boss people. told me that, I was just, I was floored, man. I was like, oh, my God, really? Bob finally snapped, man. Oh and, wow! Uh, and you just you just don't know, you know. Right. You oh yeah. You, the oh, guy yeah. was so innocent and so nice. He would do anything for anybody. And I'm telling you, he, not only that, but he had the most beautiful handwriting you ever saw. Like mm. when he filled out his reports, I'd have to fill out a report when I take his place or whatever. Mm. His thing was all filled out in, in calligraphy, like old oh, English cool. writing. Oh, wow. He, he was yeah. real meticulous about his logs, and, and man, mm. he had the most beautiful handwriting you ever saw. Mm. But he came yeah. to the end. Yeah. He just yeah, came would, to the end, you know, and then that was it. School. So I there's your story school. for today. Yeah, I, was, right. I was bullied in school to the point I had to actually switch high schools because the school wouldn't do anything about it. And, oh, yeah. Um, my, my mom told the principal, like, she's getting bullied. His response was, I'm sorry, we can't do anything about it. She's too little. Right. I was Isn't like, that retarded? And I think now, I would go, if I could see, i go, did you want me to go up five inches and beat the crap out of the kid? Or maybe I could right. bring a gun to school. Would you have preferred that? Would you have taken right. care of it then? Right. No, then then, they, then you would be in trouble. You'd be right. in that water. Because mm -hmm. Bob ended up having to go to jail. And yeah. uh, he ended up in prison for killing two people, you know. Oh, well, oh yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, man. So, yeah, it was really not good. I mean, it was bad for yeah. Bob. It was a lose-lose for Bob. And he really right. shouldn't have lost his cool and did that. But, you know, some people right. just can't help it. I mean, he had special needs. And, and he, right. he probably had been I mean, picked like, on his like, whole life. Somebody had been like that to him. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. He, he probably reached his breaking point and said, you know what? I'm going to do this. And I don't care about the consequences. I don't care what happens. And that's, and that's exactly what he did. Exactly what he did, Tim. And, I mean, you know, it's really, really, it's the true thing. You can look it up on the internet if you ever really want to research that story. But yeah, I, just I, am, couldn't, I, believe I couldn't believe it, man. I was, I was shocked, you know. So that, that was one of the crazy things that happened in my life. And it made me really happy that I was good to Bob. 
And I was oh, always yeah. sweet to Bob, it's and I always treated you. him like an equal, and yeah. I treated him like one of the best employees that, that yeah. really worked there. You know what? Because he really was. Exactly. And all the old people, the old people, they loved him. They loved him. They loved Bob. He was sweet to everybody. But it was these but two guys. That were picking on him and being that, jerks. They were then, old men, too. They were in their 60s. They were older oh, wow, guys. They weren't wow. kids. They were old. They were older than me. You know, I was just a kid when I worked there. I was probably 17, 18 years old. Hey. And they were in their 60s. You know, and they both drank in a bar down better. the road. You know? huh? you you would that? You know better. Yeah, they I should know better. Oh, yeah. They, it don't matter now. They're up there with the Lord now. Oh, yeah. You know, but Bob's probably out of jail by now. Been many many years now. He's probably done his time, you know. Yeah. But as long as he had an AM radio, and the Red Sox were playing. I'd say he's probably happy anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And they probably they probably kept him isolated too, so nobody would pick on him. I bet. You know what I mean? Oh, Don't yeah. pick on that guy. Oh, he's no. real quiet, okay. man. Watch out, you oh, know. Yeah. And then you hear the stories. Watch out for the quiet guy. You know? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh you yeah. You gotta watch out for them quiet people, man. Right. It, it really, it was really true with him. So there's so my money. story for you, and my right. with people yeah. with disabilities. Boy, we went down a long road there, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. All right. My next question is: Have you considered bringing Seventh Servant to Kentucky? Absolutely, absolutely. It's right up the road from here. So yes. All right. Cool. And then you may see us go on a little tour. Um, we're we're going to hey. be working. This, this bar we're playing at this weekend is put on by the Legend Agency, mm -hmm. who books tours between Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, up into Illinois. They have several bands that they have in rotation that go on these little tours amongst the clubs that they have. So there's a good chance that we might come through Kentucky. Cool. Real good yeah. chance. Yeah. Should we, should I went, we make I went through there this country? summer. I was in Kentucky this summer. Louisville. Cool. Yep. Yeah, that's where uh, Seven of Cats is from. Uh, hey, if you're ever in uh, around that yeah. neck of the woods, the two of us might come to your concert. Yep. Hey. Well, you better. Yeah. If I get that close, you better come yeah. to my concert. Should we drag, should we drag Caitlin to a concert? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Megan, you're going to get the final question of the evening before we wrap up. Oh, well, boy. if you're drinking, um, you got to get a ride home, though. You can't be driving. <laughs> And you were supposed to ask the next question, weren't you? No, I asked the last one. This is yours. Oh, okay. Um, I can't think of one. You can ask another one, Tim. All right. I'll have the last one for this episode. Uh, right. The final question before we wrap up is, um, have you ever considered uh, doing any type of like merchandising outside of the music realm, such as... Uh, having like I don't know like comic books, uh, audio books, stuff of that nature. I might make hard copy novels, like Steve Kane does. Mm -hmm. You know who Steve Kane is? Steve Kane, he's the uh, Christian author, isn't he? He is, and he's a big Iced Earth fan too. Oh, cool! And he, he's often a friend of mine, and he uh, he's written several books. And uh, yeah, I would consider maybe writing some books. Oh, cool. cool. Maybe not so much. If I, I, I might consider doing comic books if I really knew somebody that was a good animator. Yeah. You know, and then put some good storylines behind the stuff. But I know uh, a couple of people that are really good animators. I just don't know if they'd be interested in it. Really? My, That's a, my cousins, I'm always, uh, I'm always interested in that. They're really good artists. My cousins work in Joseph Park. Well, sweet. You have to send me some info on that. Not only that, but they usually make a good they'd make a good album cover or a book cover yeah. or okay. something in that in that I'm always looking for good art and good artists. As you yeah, can see on the Tree of Life was one of the best pictures that I purchased yeah, in Elizabeth years. Elizabeth is nineteen and then um Joseph is seventeen or will be seventeen this year. Sure and Elizabeth will be eighteen, nineteen in on the twenty third of December. Okay. All right. Oh, so just send, me, send me their info and some of their work, and I'll I'll check oh, it out. And uh, I'm not I'm not about paying somebody to make a nice picture for me. And I've I've paid actually yeah. several artists um, to make to make different drawings to me. 
Uh, the Tree of Life is a really good drawing by uh, Ash Corvita, is the lady that, that drew it. Cool. And she's out of Germany. And mm -hmm. uh, I bought the piece of art from her like five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at it and looked at it and looked at it. And then when the time came to actually make the album and put it out, it was just mm -hmm. the perfect piece of art for the, the album. Oh, cool. So, cool. And she right. is wonderful. She's a really wonderful artist. You can look at her. It's Ash Corvita. Um, I, I will definitely look her up and check her work she's out. She's got some awesome art. And you know what? She likes to draw wrestlers, believe it or not, like The Undertaker and all oh, that. Oh, cool. I she oh, I would... She's so good at it, man. It's unbelievable, you know? I'll definitely I'll look her up. I think it was with Joseph or better. Yeah. So I like a lot of that WCW and WWF stuff, too. And mm. I enjoy taking the kids to that. That's one of my things that I do enjoy, and then, and the fact that she does such good art, and then she's drawn the Undertaker, which I guess he's from over there where she lives somewhere in Germany. So she's actually a huge, the Undertaker from huge Texas. Fan of his. Yeah. And okay, he's I got up. one more question, real quick. All right. My question is: Speaking of wrestling, have you considered contributing any songs to the WWE or All Elite Wrestling? Yes, absolutely. I'm very open to that. Or even hey, making cool. songs for it, you know. I might even create songs just for that. Hey, I had talk a, to uh, I had Triple H that. or a Tony Khan and see what you can go up with. Okay. And yeah. Triple H yeah. is probably one of my favorite wrestlers of all he's time. In, so. Hey, he's yeah. in charge of WWE's creative content now. Really? Yeah. Vince you know, is no I longer took, in charge. I took a boy to see that that was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. I took him to the WWF or it was WCW, I forget, in Chattanooga, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Triple H was wrestling, mm -hmm. and uh, I put the kid on my shoulders mm -hmm. and took him right down to the ring, mm -hmm. and right mm -hmm. as soon as Triple H won the match, he walked mm -hmm. right over to that little boy and high-fived him. Cool. Oh, that's so and cool. Yeah, and it got all the news and everything. And he, I'll tell you what, that kid remembers that to this day. He's 29 yeah. years or 25 years old now. Hey. But that was one of the highlights of his life, you know. Hey. But yeah, you think, should maybe actually he had lost his dad. Mm. He had just lost his dad that year. Oh, and that's wow. why I was trying to cheer him up and take him with me everywhere and I took him to see yeah. the wrestling. He wanted to see wrestling so bad. He was really in love with Triple H. So I'll yeah. just tell you, Triple H really didn't disappoint. He oh, really man. came through for me during that match and I just can't I can't hey, tell you how wonderful that was. You should look him up and contact him, tell him about your band and uh you know let him know you want to make music for him and Okay. Um, you know, well, and you, you have any maybe, ideas how I can contact them? You send well, me those too. So. Uh, we, I will do. All right, okay. Megan. What would you like to say to as we close up shop for the uh, for this episode? Hope you all had fun listening to our interview. Oh, I enjoyed uh, it. All right, this has been it's been nice two. to meet you, and it's just nice been a to pleasure you. to meet you. Really, really nice people. And Tim, I'm mm -hmm. proud of you, man. Just keep it up, buddy. Oh, I will. Keep it up. Right. You, you interview as many people as you can and, and yep. run your podcast and run your games. And and the job. Gotta forget it. We can't forget about the day job. Oh, gotta, I'm you, sorry you about the job. Gotta, hey, gotta <laughs> everybody the job the, How are you gonna buy your game stuff hey, if you don't work? Everybody's got a prize. And yes, you know, they do. Just, I have hey, to buy guitars, just, so I paint buildings hey. though. Hey, it ain't just yeah. about my hey, life ain't about games, you know. I live, I do what I gotta do to survive. But when it's time to have some fun, hey, that 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 that's job right. You play handy. hard, you work hard, you work hard, you play hard. That's right. That's so with that game. being that's right. With that being said, this has been episode two of Bacon More Fun. This will be premiering <laughs> on YouTube.com slash blind metal gamer as well as Servant of Cat's YouTube channel. Yeah. And we're going to do that. So until next time, everyone, so long and peace out. All right. Bye. Peace out, brother. Y'all have a nice night. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.